Shall we get started? There's a guarantee we'll run over schedule. Uh, so, uh, hello everybody. I'm Chad. Um, it's nice to meet you all. Let's make it uh, crazy interactive. There's obviously the, the survey taking stuff and, and we've loaded up things that are designed to try and uh, engender question asking, but we're also totally unscripted and you can ask anything you want. When we did this in San Fran, there were some crazy, funky questions from, from people and, and uh, frankly, I'm glad it's being recorded because I wish that we had done it in, um, in San Fran. I hope you post it somewhere public. Um, so, and I'd love to meet all of you by name, but that would probably eat up the, the chunk of time in the session. Grab me afterwards and introduce yourself. <coughs> Um, so, while I'm a, uh, you know, obviously an EMC dude, um, you know, in this session I'm not, right? In this session I'm, uh, you know, a storage generic expert, and we'll apply it across everybody with no favoritism whatsoever, guaranteed. Um, and obviously I'm kind of representing VMware in a sense, so, you know, it's guaranteed to be that way. I, I know that not everyone's an EMC customer, right? So. I guess without further ado, let's let's uh, get the ball rolling. Um, you know, it, it, it uh, you know, first question, just to get a you know idea of who people are, right? So, and, and this is also a warm up question, right? To warm up your clicking skills. So, uh, you know, I guess if you take a look at these things, there's a series of, of uh, numbers. That, so, number one, are you a VMware partner or an abandoned, in a, you know, with a management and sales role? Are you a VMware partner with a technical role, right? In other words, nerd, non-nerd. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's unusual, but sometimes that happens. I'm kind of like, I should lose the suit here. I'm a nerd slash business guy, but unfortunately that's not one of your allowed answers. Well, there's an other. Um, you know, if you're a VMware customer, same thing, three and four. And uh, I'm curious, you know, if people are here who are storage vendors too, which is totally cool. Um, so let's let's start the voting. Uh, we got 20 votes. Has anyone not voted? So now we have a quick. Uh, you can you can grab one of these little buzzers. We now know 21 is the number that we're aiming for. Let's see how this survey says. Oh, 24. Okay, let's let's take a look at what the results are. Okay, so <laughs> VMware, <laughs> VMware partner with a technical role. Well, I'm actually surprised there's. So just out of curiosity, who here in the room is a customer? Okay, great. All right, well, good. Um, let's take a look at the, the next question. Um, what, you know, there's always the furious protocol debates, oh, right? You know, what's the right best protocol for, for storage with VMware? More importantly, the right protocol is whatever you're using, right? So what protocol do you use? You use Fiber, iSCSI, FCOE, NFS or DAS. Now, by the way, when I wrote this, I told the, the survey guys, I want to be able to have people like say I have multiples and stuff like that, and they're like, uh, no, the system can't do that. <laughs> so, so the question very literally is, which one is your primary? And then afterwards, we'll have some dialogue about if people use multiple, and if so, why? So let's see, uh, 23, and we're coming up to the final vote. Anyone not voted? All right, 24, there we go. Let's, let's take a quick look at the results here. So what's, what's interesting to me about this is that this is not unreflective of the market as a whole, right? Um, the, the predominance of customers are, are using fiber today because it's what they've got and what they've deployed, uh, widely using, you know, trying to minimize their use of RDMs and use VMFS as much as possible. RDM's bad in general, and very specific use cases. The, the ones that I see growing the fastest across the industry as a whole are iSCSI and NFS. So if the question is like, you know, which will you be deploying in the future? The answer is if you don't have an existing fiber network, right, the <coughs> customers who are deploying their first shared storage for VMware the first time, typically go either the iSCSI or the NFS rep. But, um, there's very little, at least that I see within the enterprise, customers who have fiber networks deploying iSCSI. Um, so, oh, how many of you by show of hands, you know, if the answer could have been I use more than one, would have said more than one? 
And, and how many of you would have used blended block and NAS models? So for the folks that didn't raise their, the, the, but used multiple, what, what would be your multiple? You know, if you, if you weren't using NAS in conjunction with one of the blocks, what, what, why did you raise your hand? Use DAS? It depends a bit on the infrastructure you have, I think. So you're saying the customers use multiple ones, but... Well, it, it, it could be, but it really depends on the infrastructure, I think. Yep. Oh, by the way, there is no right or wrong <laughs> right, to any of these questions, right? Um, so, so out of curiosity, you know, are, are you guys surprised? I saw some eyebrows lift up when the charts came up the way it did. <laughs> The one thing that's interesting is, and, and, and the problem is that the cool, the cool box is running a high scholar or, or, or NFS is pretty, pretty expensive still. So the, you know, the, the thing that's, that's interesting is also fiber tends to skew higher in Europe for some reasons. But they're not entirely, they're cheaper. Usually the fiber channel are cheaper than buying uh, high scholars or NFS boxes for uh, features on them. Uh, you know, but, you know, to, to tell you the truth, even FCIP converters are now super cheap, right? So you can get like a Q Logic uh, FCIP thing for a brand, right? Uh, so, so even if you're even if you're replicating, it's possible to do it relatively inexpensively. I'm surprised by the comment that you're saying that the iSCSI and NFS servers are relatively expensive. Well, I have experience is that we're trying to push uh, boxes with a lot of features mm -hmm. uh, that could basically give uh, the customer a very good uh, uh, installation in terms of snapshot and information and all those nice features. Uh, and when they see the boxes <coughs> on those solutions, they just run screaming away and buy something running in fiber channel. That's just basically ordinary block storage. Yep. And I think that's a shame because they really lock themselves in uh, and yeah, miss good. out on a lot of cool features. But then actually, Celeris and all that uh, costly. It's almost at the same at the same price as uh, Celeris, as, as, as far as I remember. Yeah. So, so that, you if know, if you buy a new Celeris. <laughs> Yeah, so the same money as that. Yeah. Yeah, again, I, 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 I have to, I have to be, I have to be very careful to avoid any EMC bias. <laughs> so, a, a Solera costs the same as a Clarion per unit capacity, and and you know, NetApp's pricing isn't protocol dependent. You know, when it comes to the NFS servers, those are the two that are the most predominant NFS servers in deployments. Are you saying more along the lines of you see people not deploying, you know, the more serious arrays and going down to just commodity block storage like an MSA type thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I do think that one thing that's interesting is I'm surprised to see in this how many people are using, uh, uh, sorry, this one here, I'm surprised to see even that FCOE was as high as it was. Um, all right, what are you guys seeing in terms of the, since it's mostly partners here with a small number of customers, what are you guys seeing in terms of FCOE action in EMEA? Not much. No, not much. <laughs> We're, I, I personally, I'm not even sure if there are any systems out there from an old vendor that support it yet. I have never seen it. What's that? I've never seen it. <coughs> so it's, it's still very, very, very early days. Um, the, the only two targets that I know of that support FCOE data here in that and EMC right now. You know, I see a very small amount of FCOE that typically is sold when customers do totally greenfield deployments, right? Uh, but, you know, very few large fiber shops have done a lot of large-scale migration. But, you know, it's, it is uh, starting to pick up, and we're starting to see the percentages be a little bit higher in the Americas. Again, there's this weird pattern that's very predictable. I'm a Canadian, right? Basically, when the U.S. economy has a bad dip, the Canadian economy, you can predict two years later, will have the exact same 
negative response, like clockwork, right? <laughs> I'm surprised that most people don't game the economic system because, like, literally, it's that predictable. Likewise, there's this very distinct predictability of technology adoption in in the Americas and then into EMEA and then in in APJ. So it'll be interesting to see. Anyway, so let's let's go on to the next one. Um, so, so there what we we can do this one quickly, right? Do you use VMFS and NFS together? We kind of know the answer. There was a small number of people that raised their hand, but let's do it formally for the record. Uh, VMFS only, NFS only, VMFS and NFS. Um, so we're there. We are. We're at 24. Let's take a look at the the data. See, that's 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 that is to me healthier, right? You know, I. I'm trying to shout from the mountaintop about how useful it is to have both. Um, you know, but uh, at a, a lot of customers, I still don't see, you know, in, in the, I would say that in the customers that I see and across the broad sampling, it, it would actually skew a little more like this, right? Um, so, so out of curiosity, why do you find people aren't deploying more NFS? Or why, you know, what, what are you guys seeing in, in, in your customers? Or if you're a customer, you know, what are you doing? Why are you using both? I, I, I see customers still in the fiber fabric getting obsessed about port speed. Uh, oh, we, we've got a, a perception of the people that are all about port speed and not about design. Uh, and try to steer them that design and say, well, what's your actual IELTS? What's your throughput? And try and prove them that they can achieve this in NFS. But there's still this... I, I still come across the perception of NFS. It's like the poor man. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, right. well, it's not applicable for everybody. I mean, it, it, if you have small, smaller ESX hosts with less amount of virtual machines, you could use NFS perfectly. But when you're scaling up to large hosts with 200, 300 virtual machines, NFS is like, it, it's, it's not working. It may be nice when... It may be nice when you've got a test platform for that. <coughs> it's very easy to... The thing that's fascinating, guys, this is a fascinating dialogue. It's reflective of the dialogue that occurs out there in customers, right? The, the reality of it is, is that speed or performance is measured in many attributes, right? So speed in terms of megabytes per second, if you're a storage professional, you call bandwidth, right? Uh, megabytes per second is one metric of many. If you measure speed in terms of IOs per second, if you're a storage nut bar, you call it throughput, right? Throughput and bandwidth are two different terms because you can have a thousand virtual machines that have an average IO size that's small, like 4K or 8K, which is a function not of the OS or anything like that. It's a function of the app, right? So if you put SQL Server, right, on top of Windows on top of VMware, and that was the only VM on, on that data store, you'd see a lot of 64K I, IOs. Some eight, some, some, you'd see like a, and if you use VSCSI stats, you'd see these really cool histograms of like IO distribution, right? But basically you'd see a bunch of 8Ks, you'd see a bunch of 64Ks, and then when you did backups, you'd see big bunches of like 256K. When they're small, like 4K or 8K, you tend to be more throughput, IOPS bound, right? And then frankly, it doesn't matter the size of the pipe, but you're right, customers obsess about that, right? You know, the, the, well, this is eight gigabits per second, and this is a gigabit per second, or 10 gig, right? I mean, and, and what they don't realize is that it's very difficult to saturate, in any case, the, the pipe, right? If it's a small IO size. Now, conversely, if you have big IO sizes, it's incredibly easy to saturate the pipe, whatever the pipe says, right? Uh, but, but I have to say that, again, there was an interesting dialogue around performance. You couldn't put a lot of VMs in it, and if it was small, I see boatloads of deployments that are very big with NFS. The one thing that it, I, at least I run into, right, is some customers get sold up the river down the NFS advantage route. There's one big disadvantage, which is failover behavior of NFS servers is not as robust as failover behaviors of block targets, right? And uh, I will say that of us, and I would say uh, that of many, right? 
it's, it's, it's a weird architectural thing where certain technical problems in NAS land are really easy compared with block land if you're building an array, and certain problems are ridiculously hard.